In this video, we're going to talk about the music in the ever popular and sensational Korean Netflix series Squid Game or Ojingok Game. There's of course an endless list of praises for its incredible storyline, acting, art design, and cinematography, but here are seven things that stood out to me in the soundtrack that I think deserves a little extra attention. Please note that there are light spoilers ahead. Number one, the music often plays up the contrast present in each scene. For instance, the main theme really makes you think of grade school with the simple drums and recorder. It highlights the absurdity of the pairing between children's games and death, and it's so catchy like a nursery rhyme. The first part of the rhythm actually reminds me of this Korean word game called Kung Kung Ta. These things are all bright and positive, so it ends up becoming a very disturbing contrast to the deaths you're about to see on screen. Also, there's contrast between the casual nature of the tracksuits and playground aesthetics and the classical music you hear, which has a long-standing association with elegance and formality. Which brings us to number two. The use of classical music in the series is very unsettling. Now, this is definitely not something that's novel. Oftentimes in film and TV, there's a pairing between classical music and the evil villain. But in Squid Game, it's kind of a warped version of this. First of all, you often hear classical music from the point of view of the contestants, as if the music is being played from auditorium speakers. This really reminds me of the music that you'd hear in a waiting room, like before going into a dentist appointment. What? The music's trying to soothe you by transporting you elsewhere, but your fate is pretty much already determined. And it's disturbingly fitting that Strauss's The Blue Danube plays in the background as the contestants climb up the stairs to enter each new game. This waltz is really the epitome of buoyancy and liveliness, and in fact, Strauss wrote it in Austria during a very dark post-war depression in efforts to lift up people's spirits. To make comparisons to another famous use of this waltz, in 2001 A Space Odyssey, Stanley Kubrick pairs the waltz with the weightlessness of space. In Squid Game, it's just the opposite. The contestants are walking up a dizzy maze of stairs while feeling the gravity of their predicament. Now on to number three. There's hardly any music in the second episode. <laughs> the second episode showcases the real lives of the contestants back at home. I also noticed that this episode is titled Hell, so the lack of music really adds to the storyline and is very much in contrast to the games. Number four. The pink soldiers in the game are absurdly mysterious, especially with their disguised voices and striking outfits, and the theme that accompanies them sounds equally trippy. What stands out to me is that it consists of the notes from the Lydian mode, which is widely considered to be a bright and optimistic set of pitches. Here it's used to become a whimsically ominous theme, and I think what adds to this is how the notes are harping down on the tritone. This is a very dissonant interval, and at one point in history, it was associated with the devil. The voices singing the parts give me strong Oompa Loompa vibes, and I think this plays into the role of the soldiers in the story. They're all helplessly a part of this dark operation. Now, number five, the music is very multicultural and multi-stylistic. It includes everything from folk music, haunting electronics, ambient piano, gamelan music, lush orchestral music, and even chiptune. One of my favorite moments in the soundtrack is when they're playing the honeycomb game, which includes a unique mixture of Korean percussion, recorder, what I think is the Greek bouzouki, accordion, and strings. I really love how this part here has such a quirky groove. I think it really matches the comic but stressful nature of the scene. And now onto number six, 
there are various hints of spaghetti western soundtracks present in the music. This really highlights the wild, wild west nature of things, how anything goes, but there are still some basic rules. The games are both strict and violently barbaric, similar to showdowns, which are performed as a game with straightforward rules, but where someone is fated to die for a really insignificant reason. And now number seven. From a macro viewpoint, the music featured in each episode mirrors the evolution of the games themselves. The rules and pretense of the earlier games are more direct and straight shooting, quite literally, and by the end, the games provoke increasingly complex wars amongst the contestants. So I hope you enjoy that. I know it was a slight departure from my usual content, but I was just really excited after watching Squid Game and it's especially neat as a Korean American to see a sudden boost in interest for Korean culture and also as a classical musician. There's so much classical music in here and that was really, really fantastic to see. A huge shout out and congratulations to composer and music director Chung Jae-il as well as other composers involved. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already for more content related to music and a special thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your continued support. We'll see you in the next video. Oh. <laughs>